What's up, everybody? I'm Combat. Call me Red. My boy Zine. What's going on? It's my man Cub right there. You know, we want to welcome you to the Combat Cub podcast, where we're going to reflect on fashion topics. Okay. Combat tech. Yes, sir. Funny videos. Hmm. News around the world. <laughs> Whatever anybody want to reflect on. Sounds good. But enough of me. Let's get to this cast. Rolling. Ready? Mm-hmm. Set. Put the damn eggs down. What the? <laughs> no, I'm good, bro. I'm good. Breakfast in a can. You know, in Europe, the beer is so thick, it's like soup. <laughs> Fuck that shit. Man. Not me, bro. Not me. I ain't drinking no thick ass beer. Not even a little bit. No soupy beer for you. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back, everybody, to uh, the best podcast in America. Combat Cub, of course, you know. It's your man, you know, nappy hair, don't care. Coming from the couch, combat. Got my boy, my brother on my right, my ace, you feel me? Stuffing his face with eggs, Cub. <laughs> but, gonna have us another episode, good episode today, you feel me? Yes, sir. <laughs> Bruh, how was your week? Man, it was good. <clears throat> That's what's up. It was just good. I mean, how was the turkey day? You feel me? It was very good. Very good. Very good turkey. Uh, being around family. It was awesome. Yep. Almost got put in a food coma. I didn't want to do shit. <laughs> but it was cool, though, man. Turkey day was fun. Oh, yeah. So like you said, being around family and all that good shit. For sure. Yep. No, nothing's better, you know? No, sir. That's like I, I was talking to a boy yesterday at work. Uh, I don't guess his family cooked for Thanksgiving. Oh, wow. So they went to uh, Cracker Barrel. I was like, bro, y'all didn't cook? He was like, no. Nah. I'm like, damn, bro. You're supposed to cook on Thanksgiving. He said somebody did cook. I said, yeah, the motherfuckers in the kitchen. <laughs> Back there sweating, slaving on Thanksgiving. They could be at home with their family. Yeah. But, you know, it's whatever. <clears throat> Wow. Wow. But before we even get any further into this podcast, we got to call Jug, man. Heck yeah, man. Let's give him a ring. Because he's all about Combat Cub. So, we're going to show him what's up. Let's see if he answered the phone. We'll see if he answered. <laughs> Yo, Jug. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Bet. Hell yeah, you on the podcast too, bro. Hell yeah. <laughs> So, <laughs> how you doing? Just chilling. Getting, uh, getting ready for the day. About to. Oh, uh, what you got playing? Fine bulls. That's what's up. That's what's up. How was your turkey day, my dude? I stayed high and I stayed fed. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> That's what's up. <laughs> <laughs> so this whole bull thing, man. What you mean fighting bulls? Y'all, y'all finna go like ride them, or y'all finna piss them off, or tell me more about that. So, so a couple of my boys do actually ride bulls. Um, me being so called the bullfighter, I help, I protect them. I put myself in necessarily harm's way to protect the rider. Whether I take a hit or not. 
You play too much. Dang. Bro, this this ain't Spain, bro. We ain't running with the bulls out here, you feel me? <laughs> he said he puts himself in harm's no, way. Fuck I that. can't do it. I mean, I'll ride them, but I don't, I don't know. I mean, I guess that's putting yourself in harm's way also, riding them big motherfuckers, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I invest in uh, pads. Oh, yeah, that's right. They do be suited and booted. I don't even think that's enough. <laughs> no. Heck no. <laughs> like, for real. So how's the family? Family's is good. Uh, the son just went back to his mom a couple of days ago. I get him back in two weeks. Uh, and as of last Friday, the wife is five pregnant. Oh shit! No, well, congratulations. congratulations. We're gonna have us a niece or a nephew. It's gonna be a nephew though. I got enough nieces, bro. <laughs> Dude, I got. Oh, yeah. it's I got a, literally it's gonna be a boy. I got literally two, ne- three nephews. All right, and the rest is nieces. Like it's awful. But hell yeah, congratulations, man. I'm hella happy. So, man, I know you're a gamer Appreciate like we is, you know. And I ain't got to play, you know, MW3 yet. So, I know you and Cruz have, you know. Why don't y'all, you know, peep me in on the inside of MW3? <laughs> it's awesome. So, have you ever played the original Modern Warfare 2? Oh, yes. That's my favorite one. It'll bring back a lot of... Uh... Nostalgia, whatever the fuck that N word is. Nostalgia. <laughs> whatever that word is. That's a big ass word. That ain't even yeah, my vocabulary. <laughs> it's like whatever the N word is. <laughs> and not that N word. <laughs> yeah, we, we got you. We got you. That's what's up. <laughs> but hell yeah, man. People's in on that. Yeah, <clears throat> nostalgy, or whatever that word is. Huh? Yeah, man. Nostalgia. Yeah, I haven't played MW two. Uh, so I, I mean, it it seems really brand new to me. So I like it. I like the zombies and everything like that. I haven't played multiplayer yet, but yeah. It's all good. And, and and the reason why I say that for me is literally every map that was that you played on Modern Warfare Two is in this Modern Warfare Three. Hmm. Hey, is Rebirth Island on MW Three? No. Oh, that's super trash. I heard that they were gonna put it on there, but I guess not. I need to bring that map back. Oh man, Rebirth Island is like. Alcatraz. If you ever seen Alcatraz, you know, in San Francisco. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. I've been in that damn place. Fuck that. Oh, wow. <clears throat> Alcatraz ain't no joke, bro. Haunted as fuck. Colder oh, really? than hell. It's creepier fuck. Wow. Infested with fucking Wait, great you... white sharks. Dang. You've been in the actual Alcatraz? Yeah, man. I'm from, I'm from San Francisco. That's my city. I moved to Tennessee here in 03. So, yeah, I've been to Alcatraz, Angel Island, the piers, all of that. Wow. But I tell you what, though, I will never go back to that motherfucker. I'd like to tour it. No, nah, <laughs> hell no, nah, you touring by your damn self. Not me. <laughs> I, I would like to tour it. Yeah, I love y'all, bro. Y'all FaceTime me. Mm-mm. Because I'm not going back in there ever. I'll show you where we where the pack punch was, where the speed cola was. <laughs> I don't want to know where nothing is. The Black Ops Two zombies. <laughs> this is right. Mm-hmm. Hell mm-hmm. yeah! <clears throat> but hell, man, just glad to hear your voice, Jug. I know we played last night, man. I was having you know lagging difficulties because everybody in my house want to be connected to my damn Wi-Fi. <laughs> <laughs> That shit pissed me off. I was like, man, Jug, I'll holler at you tomorrow. I'll just shut my shit completely off. Literally, I was like, are you still here? I didn't hear nothing. I was like, yeah, he gone. <laughs> yeah, I, was, I dipped out, bro. That shit made me mad. Oh, man. <clears throat> Hell yeah, Jug, man. But look, you, you, you on the show. You feel me? 
we ain't got your face on here yet. You know, you ain't in full body, you know, presence, but we got your voice on here. That's a start. Yeah. Man, I'm still here. Oh, I yeah. still feel in the presence. That's what's up. That's what's up. That's what's Take up. Care. Yeah. But hell, man, look. This, this shit will be posted at 5 o'clock tonight. Holla at your boy, man. I'll holla at you here in a little bit. Okay. All right, boss. We'll holla at you. All right. Later. Later. Right, later. Yeah, man. We need to get more gamers on here like that. That'd be cool. That'd be real cool. Yeah. Gaming community. But you know, Chug part of the team. You know, we like SpongeBob and Plankton. <laughs> Dang. Oh, uh, shit. How about Reckless? Bro, Reckless don't fuck with me no more, bro. Oh, no. I don't know why. I guess it's because he just plays just straight MW3. I, I ain't seen him in Warzone in a minute. Oh, wow. Every time I'm on, he's in MW3. I'm like, hell, I ain't got that shit yet. Mm hmm. Money's tight because, you know, you got, we had Thanksgiving. Mm hmm. Girl's birthday was yesterday. Twins are 17. Happy birthday. All that good stuff. They little get togethers today at one. I guess I'm going to take these little niggas to tomorrow. Yeah. I don't know how that's going to turn out, but a bunch of teenage kids in the mall. I'm bringing vest gun, grenade launches. <laughs> Tourniquets. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, gosh. <clears throat> oh, shit. But, but yeah, man. And you, we got Christmas right around the corner. You That's know? true. So, yeah, got a lot going on. I'm almost done with my Christmas shopping. Though. I don't know about the wife, but yeah. I'm almost done. It only takes me 15 <laughs> minutes. It takes her three to seven weeks. <laughs> three to seven weeks. <laughs> like Amazon shipping. Dang. Hmm. All right, well. But hell, man, you want to get to these vids? Let's do it. What you got for us? Uh, This is a video in Antarctica, bro. Uh, okay. UFO spotted. But <clears throat> it's to be expected, though, because there's nothing there. You know? <laughs> there's okay. nothing in Antarctica. I mean, we can't survive it. Yeah. Aliens could. So why not aliens inhabit Antarctica? Yeah. Underground. Almost like Battle, Battle, the Battle of Los Angeles movie. Hmm. Badass. But hell yeah, let's let's get to this po pie footage. Bam. Uh oh. What happened? Come on here. Oh, it turned down. Hmm. What? The largest research station on the continent. It was. Yep, we're going to restart that. McMurdo Station, Antarctica. Located on the southern peninsula of Ross Island, this is the largest research station on the continent. It was opened by the U.S. government in 1956 and houses up to as many as 1,200 residents at a time. In January of 2015, a U.S. Navy flight engineer who served with the Antarctic Development Squadron at McMurdo for 14 years, came forward to investigate a reporter, Linda Moulton Howe, with bizarre accounts of his time in Antarctica. In January 2015, I got an email from a retired naval flight engineer. He's asked me to call him only Brian in the world public. And this is what he told me from about 1983 to when he retired from the Navy in 1997. He was in all kinds of what they call Antarctic Squadron expedition missions that included rescuing people in and out of various places. Mm. In all these trips, nothing of a high strangeness had occurred and then all of a sudden it was one thing after another. Okay. During a squadron mission in the Transantarctic Mountains, the whole crew saw a whole bunch of silver darting objects, and they are round. And he says they're doing the strangest thing. They're going like to this peak in a group, to this peak in a group, to this peak in a group, and then they'd all take off. Take a picture. And not only did this happen once, it flash. happened over and over. <laughs> 
According to the informant, <laughs> this was just one of many strange mysteries on the continent that he witnessed during his time there. <laughs> they get an assignment not long after. There's a medical emergency. They are now under the gun, the clock is ticking, and a decision was made. They're going over through the no-fly zone because it's a medical emergency. And what do they see? No fly zone, exactly. In the ice, like a huge entrance to a cave, but slanted going down. And he said, I think it was at least Linda 200 feet in diameter, a big hole in the ice. And he said, our instruments are not operating. We were losing electricity. We had magnetic anomalies. And we concluded there's something about this hole that is now causing these problems. Mm. They do their medical recovery. And the next thing they know, they're all being chewed out by men in suits that are not from McMurdo. Uh -oh. They appear the to be from blood. Washington, D.C. <laughs> and as he said, they told us that we are never ever to fly over that hole and we are never to discuss it again. What is that wow. about? And does that have anything to do with all these other pieces that keep emerging, mm -hmm. that there might be something archeological? in Antarctica. Archaeological bitches. According to ancient astronaut theorists, this was not the first time a massive hole has been spotted in the ice of Antarctica. Famous polar explorer, Admiral Richard Byrd, allegedly history. reported seeing a massive entrance to an underground world during his 1947 expedition to the South Pole. Admiral Byrd made a lot of unusual statements, allegedly talking about a large opening at the South Pole that went deep inside the Earth, ice-free, and was inhabited by various sorts of aliens. And when Byrd got back to the work. United States, he was brought yeah. back to Washington, where he was questioned very heavily about his statements. And allegedly, he was told to stop talking about this. You have to wonder, is the South Pole some kind of extraterrestrial entry zone, some kind of portal that's so important that it has to be controlled by the military? I mean, there's shit about this planet we don't know, bro. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Like, they, <clears throat> they were showing this one, and uh, I think it was... It was somewhere, dude, but there, it was a, it was a snowy, icy mountains, and you know how a door is, you feel me, like a big-ass fucking bay door, you know, well, it had the curve of a door, yeah. and it looked like it can open, thinking that was aliens, bro, I'm like, it's crazy, man, I believe, I'm gonna say, it, I believe in that shit all the time, I don't care what all these skeptics gotta say, they can suck it, do the research, Dang. but let's get into something fun, you know? Like gaming, gaming, heck Fun. yeah! You can talk shit, make new friends, you know, cuss motherfuckers out, like I be doing. But that's only when they talk shit, though. Man, that was fun. That one we went with TNT. TNT, TNT <laughs> yeah, he didn't send me a friend request either, motherfucker. <laughs> what? <laughs> no, he didn't. This guy, I know, bro. And Man. them dudes, dude, if we wanted you dead, bitch, if we wanted you dead, we would. You would have been dead. Yeah, so like. Come on. We was murking motherfuckers. That was a fun, fun one, man. I can't wait to go back in. He said, oh, man, are they friendly? No, they ain't friendly. He just dumped the whole mag. <laughs> I did. That was me. <coughs> <coughs> I was sitting up there in the building while y'all was in the helicopter, and I seen them walking. I said, oh, no, fuck that. Fat, 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 fat. And then, you know, I had the javelin, so I'm a Shoot motherfuckers truck. <laughs> it's fun, man. I'm I'm taking a javelin everywhere with me in the DMZ, oh, man. man. They got <laughs> they got a vehicle. It's a wrap. <laughs> it's a wrap. So it's, it will track the vehicle? Yeah, it'll track the hell out of a vehicle. Okay. Even if you ain't as soon as you shoot the rocket, you ain't gotta look at the vehicle no more. It's automatic. Boom. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, I guess that's why it goes up. Guidance because system. it's you know, mm. oh <laughs> man, I was wondering how that worked. Cause you remember when th that one time we played DMZ and dude shot at us and tore out. Mm -hmm. 
I fucking hit him with the That's javelin. Right, I, I said, I told you I destroyed his truck. <laughs> he said, let's go. <laughs> yeah, we got to go. Said, we got to go. <laughs> they coming after his whole squad. I ate his ass up, though. Man. Don't shoot at us, bro, or try to run us over. Because that javelin finna, no matter where you mm. where you go, bro, it's going gonna, it's gonna to spot you. You feel me? I love it. <laughs> let's see. So just, ima- just imagine if we, have, we both equipped a javelin. I was just thinking, like, what could I bring in for, like, a support to what you got going on? Well, that game, I had the Javelin and I had the M4. M4? Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. I have to think about that. But, I mean, if you want to, if you don't want to run, you know, you want to just straight just murder motherfuckers, carry a, uh, a Saken, customized yeah. Saken, yeah. and your Javelin. And just rain hell on these motherfuckers. <laughs> like. Because, you know, the Saken is a 150 round mag. Yeah. Is the rate so, of fire real sm- real short, though? or uh, No, nah, the rate slow? of fire is pretty good. Okay. But <clears throat> so I've been LMG. seeing that a lot with people playing playing with all the, uh, like the little SMGs because of the rate of fire. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's smart. I mean, because you're going to get your rounds down, down target, but. But the Saken hits harder. Yeah, it hits harder. Bah, 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 bah. I don't know. What was he? He he was shooting something. It was just like, go. Oh, oh, TNT? Oh, my god! Yeah, he was, probably shooting, he was probably shooting Saken, bro. That motherfucker was loud. Because <laughs> I heard you saying, bro, <sighs> what, what are you shooting? shooting? <laughs> <laughs> what is that? <laughs> I didn't recognize it. Man. Yeah, his Ever. ass didn't send me a friend request either, bro. <sighs> so sad. Was, so sad. To him, man. All right, you ready? Yeah, what's up? Let's hit, let's, yeah, oh man, bro, this dude right here is hilarious. I watch him every day on break. You gotta, you gotta subscribe to him. When are you gonna start uh, streaming? I don't know. Whenever I get the money, I guess. Cause it won't be probably the beginning of the year. Cause uh, all you need is a webcam. Things are like fifty bucks. Mm, webcams. Yeah, and it connects to your Xbox. I think so. I want to get a bigger TV though first too. Oh okay. Because all you gotta do is just set up set up your webcam on your TV and you got that and then you just broadcast. Oh, that's what's up. Hell yeah. Yeah. I but think, hell, man. I think you can do that with Xbox. I know with PlayStation, you know they have everything. So. But this you ready? is Timmy Two Cans. This nigga is hilarious. This nigga is hilarious. Oh, you go ahead. You go ahead. Is it stupid or dumb? Ultra one, this is actual. The contract target was engaged. How did my target? target this time. Wait, does that count? A- what do you think went wrong out there today, buddy? You were camping that zip line and you just you weren't expecting Ultra anyone to come one, up it? Right. No, I was coming up and I heard you coming up, so I had to protect myself. I don't know That's why right. you're screaming. Was that an attitude? Oh, man. Whoa, no, 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 bucko. Mr. Bunny Man. Mr. Bunny Man, you better watch it, pal. How am I gonna get up there without them <clears throat> ratting it out? So stupid. Oh, you you plead for help, bro? <laughs> what what went wrong out there? <laughs> Talk to me about your it. Mother, Talk to me about your mother. Your mother her <laughs> smells like salmon. Oh. <laughs> I was gonna get you up, idiot. What? Why are you so your, toxic? Your mother. Your mother Apologize. Her, her smells like salmon. Apologize. You wanna get up? Say sorry. Say sorry. Yeah, fuck you. Fuck you. Pussy ass bitch. Fuck you were camping you. You camp the zip line. You got absolutely <laughs> smoked. You mother, suck. Your bitch. Mother, I don't care. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep talking about my mother. And, yeah. <laughs> Weirdo. That guy had the craziest laugh I've ever heard in my life. I think. Stay sharp. Why? Why would he plea? Why would he plea and then talk shit? <laughs> What on earth is the point of that? I was, I was gonna res that guy. Wait a minute. Oh, yeah. Boom! Take that, dummy! Boom, 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 boom! Boom! Where do you run to? I ran right here. What do you say? Are you trying to hunt for us or something? Am I trying to hustle you, you said? <laughs> do I sound like a hustler? Do I sound like a hustler? Huh? Do you take me for a hustler? That's great. Your mom still smells like salmon. This guy's still talking shit. <laughs> is he still dead over there? Wait, where is this guy?
This is why I like carrying rock a lot. What do you think went wrong out there, Bunny? You tried to, you tried to come up the zip. Oh, do it inside. Ultra One killing operators will put a contract on your head. Engage at your discretion. I love the DMZ, bro. Was that your teammate over there? Advised an operator in your area needs medical. Plead. Wait, which is better? Should I get this sniper? Oh, this guy had guap. Did I just get prezzy? Hey, you got a mic, bro. Alright, I'm going. Oh, you, <laughs> you should no, you shouldn't have done that. Oh, it's you. That's hilarious. Oh man. Bro, you gotta watch more of his stuff, bro. It's hilarious. <clears throat> like these motherfuckers be doing some dumb shit. Like oh, he yeah. won't even send dude. To, like he sent, he didn't even send dude a friend request, right? He killed him. Well, he kept shooting him. Dude was talking to him. He kept shooting him and downing him. He said, man, and he kept reviving him, right? And kept doing it and doing it. And he mm -hmm. said, man, just come on. Let's ride. So they got in the car. Not even on the same team. Going around killing motherfuckers. I was like, damn. But no, nah, Timmy cool. Timmy cool. That's crazy. I know, right? Why ain't you slaughtering like, you know, on, on the stream like that, bro? I ain't streamed in a minute. <laughs> I think it's time. You got too many things going. You right, though. You right. You work too yeah, damn much. I know it. That's all I think about is working. <clears throat> That's bad. That's what make you old. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think about fun, partying. You know? Stay yeah. young. Okay. Okay. You know, I got the whole werewolf look Ooh, going on. You feel me? <laughs> <coughs> All right, now it's time to get into some serious shit. Some serious stuff. Yeah, front lines over in Israel. Uh oh, here we go. So, uh, yeah. Ready? Yeah. All right. Fuck Gaza. CNN's Nick Robertson and his crew got an up close view of the ash, the bullets, the trail of absolute destruction. The rare inside look at how the IDF is fighting comes at a consequential moment in this war as the American president says that the Strip's main hospital must be protected. Now, Israel says the very same facility houses a Hamas command complex below it. And CNN reported the story that you're about to see under Israeli Defense Force escort at all times, but CNN did not submit its script or its footage to the IDF. And CNN retained editorial control over the final report that you'll see now. Mm. Driving into Gaza with the Israeli forces. It's a war zone. The it's conditions of our zone. access only show <clears throat> officers, no faces of soldiers, and don't show sensitive equipment. We well, are like passing mile about... after mile mm. of destruction. Buildings blown, Sandstorms collapsed, nothing untouched by the fury of Israel's hunt for Hamas. Streets here crushed back to sand shops everything that we see no sign of any civilians here the and the soldiers have been telling us that even <clears throat> inside the stores they've been fighting things like rocket propelled grenades ready to use against them as they were advancing through this area a few miles in we pull up at a command post soldiers living in blown apartment buildings Every building I'm looking at here, wherever you turn, it's destroyed, it's shot up. Hard to imagine how civilians endured the bombardment here. Our next journey, much deeper into Gaza. We arrive a hundred meters from a battle with Hamas. Ooh, there we go. Tanks blasting targets in nearby buildings. The IDF's top spokesperson, waiting for us. We're now, we're now conducting an operation inside Gaza next to Rantisi Hospital. Israel oh, is facing honcho. massive international pressure mm -hmm. over Very the destruction of honcho. homes, the shockingly high civilian death toll, and in the last few days, over its apparently heavy-handed yeah, tactics <clears throat> at hospitals. We are searching the tunnel with the bulldozers 
to reveal the tunnels that we suspect that are underneath the hospital. Gari has brought us here to show the connection he says exists between oh, Hamas and the Rentisi children. That's crazy. Right? Wow. But, I mean, you get bombed, I mean, you got to handle business. You can't sit there and, you know, show fear and tuck your tail and run. Yeah. Uh, you got to show that, motherfucker, you done bombed the wrong niggas. Yeah. Yeah, I can uh, understand that. I, I, this thing is crazy. I mean, right? I mean, what do you expect? You attack one country, uh, you expect the other country not to retaliate? It's just stupid. Because <laughs> it's going to happen. And no matter what country you, you is in and this, on this whole fucking face of this planet, mm. one person bombs another person, another person's going to retaliate and do the same thing. Oh, yeah. For sure. Yeah. Man. What a world we live in. Just like my boy Mac Dre said, which I should have already got it tattooed on me, life's a bitch, then you die. <laughs> 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 Man. Man. I just, I wonder uh, how the how the people that live there how they how they how are they getting along? You know, wonder what's going on with them. It's probably just like it's going how it's going down in Ukraine and with the whole Ukraine and Russia thing. You know. Yeah. I mean, it's sad. People losing their houses. You know, people losing businesses. Mm -hmm. Families losing their lives. But it's war. Yeah. Unfortunately, war come with casualties. And that sucks. The casualties of war. Well. All right, man. You got anything else? Yeah, there's some, there's, I think I got another <clears throat> couple of videos another on couple. here. Maybe one, maybe two, maybe six, maybe seven. All right. Let's do it. All right. This is a video of the U.S. doing airstrikes in Syria, man. Mm -hmm. Show you how much power we got, too. Mm. I mean, this clip's only like 20, 30 seconds long, but hell. It gives you an example of uh, American hardware. <laughs> All right. Heck yeah. Let's see what this thing says here. Pentagon. What the heck? Well, sounds like, look like there's no sound, but there's a big old explosion. <laughs> <laughs> Training location was uh, weapons facility were hit. <coughs> it was hit good. <clears throat> oh. oh, yeah, they hit them targets on point. Hmm. I wonder how many pounds did they use? Oh, wow. Yeah, that's under IR. Infrared image and make everything look better. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> huh. Oh, we got oh some, shit, what is this, Home Alone? Christmas music, yeah? Yeah. Uh, every now and then I, <clears throat> when I'm working, I need something to help me lock in, so uh, I found these like Harry Potter lo fi beats. It's weird. It's, it's pretty cool though. Used to love Harry Potter back in back in the day. So you bumping Hogwarts <clears throat> tracks now? Uh huh. With lo-fi, so it's got mm -hmm. like the, you know, it's got a nice little beat to mm -hmm. it. Do, do, Awful. Do, 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 Awful. Do, do, do. Awful. <laughs> helps me helps me work better. Play some like some money bag or something. You feel me? Or some uh, play some Tupac. You know, Tupac's a poet. He will get you in his own. Uh, like okay, okay, you be uh, done in ten minutes. No, uh, I like stuff that's like uh, no words, and uh, you know, orchestra. like the Siberian orchestra. orchestra. No, that's too too much. But what? stuff that's like um, it has it has it has to be a certain vibe. I, I can't explain it, but <clears throat> it makes my my brain operate on a different uh, level and to where I can focus. And be productive. So, I like being productive. Not really. Oh man, <laughs> it just depends, you know. Yeah. Uh -huh. On whatever the hell I got to do. 
I hear you. Yeah, I, <clears throat> I'd rather be productive working towards something I want to do. Right? Like, we should get us some wingsuits, bro. <laughs> do some fucking base jumping. Oh, God. Bro, they only like eight grand. Okay. You got that easily. Mm-mm. <laughs> ever, ever, no, bro, right for a wingsuit, bro. Bro, <laughs> bro you, you you like a multimillionaire on, on your own business, you know. There's no return on that investment, though. You ain't trying to invest in it. I mean, you. I mean, you gonna. I mean, you gonna put money into it, but you are gonna have fun afterwards. That's the investment. If I don't die, yeah. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> I see the video of one dude hit the fucking cliff, bro, the side of the mountain. Bro. Boom. No. You're right. You're right. If I don't die, <laughs> I'd take the risk. Thing but, you is, know, thing, I, I, ain't never, I ain't never seen that one black person do that, though. Yeah. We should be the first. Uh, uh, I don't know yeah, what's going uh, on. No. Yeah, yeah, no, no. <laughs> yeah, but not for eight, eight grand. No, I Bro. couldn't. Mm -mm. I mean, you don't want to buy a used one. Probably got holes in it. As soon as you jump, then you're going straight to the bottom. I'd rather just uh, do parachute jumping. Yes, but then I seen a video on that the other day. Yeah. A lady did base jumping and fell to her death because her parachute malfunction didn't open. Mm. Yeah. I was like, mm. But and jumping out of an airplane? No, she jumped off of a, a cliff. cliff. Into an open area and her shit never opened up and she died. Bow right there. Oh, no. that was her grave. No, no, I'm talking about like jumping out of an airplane. Oh, skydiving. Oh yeah, we can do that. You got two sets of shoots. Yeah. You got a original shoot and you got a reserve shoot. Would you jump by yourself? Fuck yeah, I would. I've jumped by myself before. Really? <laughs> yeah, How man. was it? Amazing. Oh but I'm a God. daredevil. I mean, I'm an adrenaline Heck junkie. Yeah. I go into house fires with a smile on my face. Fucking, I'll smile while I'm shooting. If motherfucker shooting at me, it's, it's a bigger smile because I get to shoot back and I'm not finna kill something. <laughs> like, heck yeah. But, but yeah. All man, right. You got a video, man? Oh, I, we can we can check it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Play this. This dude's a good ass actor. Let's see what he got to say. As tensions continue to escalate in the Middle East, many people are saying it's a binary conflict between good and evil, although good and evil changes depending on who you talk to. Who would have <laughs> thought that a person advocating for shades of grey and nuance would be Andrew Tate? <laughs> Hello there, you Awakening Wonders. Thanks for joining us on our voyage to truth and freedom, where we will be open to all information, all possibilities, all speculation before doing our level best to find a pathway through that respects our individual freedom, our collective freedom, the right for other people to hold different opinions, and the fact that if we're ever to achieve anything other than this period of decline, disintegration, conflagration, war, and hatred, we're going to have to have some unusual conversations, such as the one between Piers Morgan and Andrew Tate on Piers' show, Quiet recently many people were struck by Andrew Tate's position and his ability to hold that position when talking about the escalation of events in the Middle East and his ability to hold a particular line and unwillingness to answer certain questions while interestingly if you ask me and let me know if you agree with this in the comments in the chat acknowledging that there are grey areas now in the last few years there's no question that our cultural space has changed more division more loathing more hatred more people getting censored more people getting cancelled. Have a look at how Andrew Tate handles this conversation and put aside what your particular opinion of Andrew Tate is for a moment, whether you're a top G fan or someone that thinks that Andrew Tate is a stain on our culture. And ask yourself, is Andrew Tate making reasonable points or is Andrew Tate way out of line? Let's go through this together and as well we'll be including some commentary from the Times of Israel who talked about some of Netanyahu's policies and how they potentially contributed to an escalation of violence as well as a piece that suggests that deep state interest within Israel potentially and allegedly contributed to Hamas's funding. Astonishing though that is to say out loud. Certainly what it helps us to do is acknowledge that this is a very complicated political situation. Just so you know what my personal opinion is, terrorism and the violent murder of people in order to pursue political goals is disgusting and appalling. The bombing of civilian populations is appalling. I don't know how we're going to navigate our way through this and yet 
Surely we must try together. As I always say, if you have a particular spiritual, religious, ideological or national allegiance, I respect that. And one thing I've learned in the conversations I've had the around this issue is, is, is moving, it's very difficult like to change too, like someone's mind about a particular out. allegiance to oh, Judaism or Israel or Zionism <clears throat> or a particular allegiance to Islam or Palestine. It's very unlikely, and I would actually say inappropriate, to try to tamper with people's feelings. And yet we must somehow try to find a way to frame this issue that doesn't deny any possibility of Red a peaceful D. solution. <laughs> Must we? Let me know in the comments. Let's have a look at the... Bro, his DV ain't a... It ain't a DV no more. That shirt. <laughs> I don't know what that is. What is that? Overly washed? <laughs> <laughs> it's probably designer, but I was just thinking... Remember that commercial? It said where your uh, stuff was overwashed yeah. and his deep V was looked like that. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, man. I hope he ain't going on a date. <laughs> oh, no. I see the same commercial. <laughs> yup. But now, after that commercial, probably designers are making stuff that looks like that. This is new <laughs> looking all like wore out. <laughs> he, don't have to, he had to get his chest hair waxed. Oh. Right in that area, just so he could wear that shirt. Dang. Me, I don't want to walk around with a red chest because I got the bitch waxed just to wear a shirt like that. Yeah. I mean, I just wear no shirt if that's the case. I like that hat though. The, the beanie, mm -hmm. that bright ass beanie. I got one like that. Target. <laughs> Target. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you want to keep going? Sure. Right. The conversation. I want to turn to the war between yeah, yeah, Israel yeah, yeah. and Hamas in, mm -hmm. in Gaza. What is <laughs> your view of this war? I think when this you call it a war, you're doing a disservice <laughs> to the people who are having their limbs blown off by some of the most advanced technical weaponry on the planet. It is a genocide and it is disgusting. And it doesn't matter which side of the political spectrum you fall on. When you observe a genocide in front of your very eyes, you should be disgusted. Which side is what? Why is he so serious with his <laughs> lips and his mouth movement, bro? <laughs> like, I just talk normal because we'll get it. Like, fuck. He's so intense. Damn. <laughs> Drama waging genocide. Yep. The yep. Israelis are genociding the Palestinians, and you know it as well as everybody I don't else know does. That. Well, then it seems like your bosses are not allowing you to know it. What perhaps. do you think of, of what Hamas did on October the seventh? Why are you starting the story in the middle? I Pierce? didn't. I just asked you about the wider war. It's extraordinary, isn't it, that we live in a time where a person who a little while ago this would have been regarded so serious, as almost man. a positive thinking <laughs> guru and pickup I mean, artist it's a serious, is now discussing. It's a serious it's moment, but yeah. <laughs> damn, bro, really? Damn. You're the only one talking like that. Yeah, that's, that's, that's how he is. <laughs> He's so, so intense. We need to get him in here. Yeah. I'll yeah, eat his cool. ass up. <laughs> <laughs> Take them glasses off of one motherfucker. You been smoking? <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Oh, Andrew Tate, man. That motherfucker, she's a trip. Yeah. Did you want to keep watching? Or you want yeah, yeah, play a little bit more. Play a little bit more of that shit. Israel and Palestine with a prominent news journalist. Obviously, this issue is so contentious that some people just don't want to hear anything other than that was a terrorist attack and whatever response Israel have is entirely legitimate and appropriate. It's their Pearl Harbor. It's Israel's 9-11. And other people think that this is an unconscionable genocide. Whenever there's an issue where opinions right, diverge so strongly... It's something else. So, man. do you think <clears throat> that it's a genocide? I don't know what's going on over there. I don't either, but so I mean, I've been I've been hearing stories here and there and everywhere else, but I'm like, I don't know what's real. I mean, I don't know. I, don't I think know they the get us to stay focused on one thing when there's some actually major thing to happen. You feel me? And that I mean, Let's our government that. does shit like that, crooked motherfuckers. Yeah, I don't know. I just man, I. I think that's why I work so much because we it's just I can't stand the craziness that just goes on. There's always something going on. And it's like, all right, well. That's like just the other day they just had a police shooting in West Phoenix. <clears throat> Excuse just, me. Like the longer I live, the less I like <laughs> the world I live in. <laughs> it's crazy. I know. It was cool when we was younger, though. And just yeah. it just got crazier and crazier yeah. over the years, like. And, and I think it's always been this nuts, but it's just we just now just taking taking into it. Yeah, our understanding is just 
getting bigger and, you know, <clears throat> the carefreeness of, of, of being young, it's gone. And, uh, you know, you just like the hard, cold, hard facts are just smacking us in the face every day. We're around other people who are, you know, fed up with things too. And so you're carrying their burdens and, yeah. This is, oh man, this is nuts. Too much. Yeah. So, I mean, I think that's why, I, like I said, I think that's why I work a lot is because I just, I want to be productive and create something I'm proud of. True, but this country can give a fuck <clears throat> about it. They can care less about us. They just worry, they just want the fucking taxes, the money that comes out of it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, it's crazy. Mm-hmm. It's like I, I told Haley the other day, I was like, man, look. The U.S. people, the people in this country are slaves. Slavery has never ended. Mm. Yeah, they say it's free. Shit ain't free, bro. We're slaves because these mother, the government is taking our well-earned money, you know, throughout the year and sending that shit to other countries. Yeah. Like, and at the end of the year when we get our tax refund, we don't get shit. Nothing. Like, come on. Like. <sighs> yeah, sluts. I swear, bunch of sluts in the government. Yeah, F F J B motherfucker. Fuck mm. Joe Biden and his criminal people. You know, I was just thinking about that. You know, how I don't, I don't. You know, I think he's just, of course, the front guy. He's just the face, and other people who have their agendas are the ones who actually things. run it. Yeah, and he's just signing his name wherever they tell him. He's got to be that up. way. Don't let me don't let me get in the office. I'm firing every motherfucker in there. Everybody. It's gonna be like a football team. I'm firing everybody. I'm drafting new people. We're gonna make the team better. Mm. You got life fucked up. Holding all these secrets and shit. We know y'all secrets. Y'all niggas, we ain't stupid, bro. We ain't stupid. I wonder how possible that would be though, since a lot of our debt is owned by other countries. I wonder if we really do have a say. And even if an American is in charge. Fuck that. We'll overthrow the government. Fuck them hoes. Yeah. That's crazy. It's crazy. It's but one something. of these days is going to come down to uh, fight or flight. And I ain't running. Mm. <clears throat> this is my land. I'm sorry. This is our land. And we're going to protect it. Why we're going to protect it? Because family's here. Yeah. You feel me? For sure. I mean, people in other countries, they don't live like us. You feel me? They live in little mud homes or, you know. <laughs> mud homes. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Whatever, bro. You know, living rough, bro. It reminds like, me. Living off the land like every fucking day, no matter what. And ain't like us, you know, we got a season we can hunt. You feel me? I mean, we get our food, groceries, blah, blah, blah. They living horrible. We, I mean, yes, we, we got all the good shit. But the government keep fucking raising the prices on every fucking thing. That's like that's like my boy John. I call him John Wick. This motherfucker said, "All I want for Christmas is a couple EBT cards." <laughs> I was like, bro, oh, like, I want a couple of them too." <laughs> oh, wow. Fuck yeah! Don't give me nothing else. Just give me an EBT card. Let me go grocery shopping. <laughs> Shit. That's like at at work, man. Like. The price has been so crazy. Like Cinnabons, bro. I remember when it was like four dollars tax and all. These bitches almost seven dollars. For how for many? A twelve pack, bro. When you can go to the motherfucking donut shop and get you a whole dozen of whatever for about seven bucks. You feel me? Instead of just some measly ass Cinnabons. Yeah. But they good though. They so good. They so good. You play too much. Them bitches in there. Anything with cream <laughs> filling in it is disgusting. Uh-huh. I don't do cream filled donuts. None of that shit. Blech. Disgusting. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm weird. It's all good. I ain't had any donuts in a minute, though. But when you were saying, like, uh, living in huts and stuff, I remember thinking about, like, uh, Mexico. Mexico. And uh, I was like, man, you know, this third world country and all this stuff. And like, and I saw this video uh, and I was just like, oh, you know, and they were talking in Spanish. It's like, oh, wow, what is, what's going on here? 
It's like, oh, it's just what's going on in Mexico City. I was like, what? I mean, and they have paved roads. I mean, it looked like L.A. I was like, what? I thought they lived in huts and stuff. You know. The cartel mm-hmm. run Mexico, bro. Yeah. But, I mean, it's like, you know, and being in America, they always say that America is like a first world country. There's no other country, you know, other places. You know, they don't have what we have. I was just like, they got everything. <laughs> they, got, I mean, they might have the freedom. I don't know how it is to live down there, but I don't know how free we are anyway. But um, I just thought it was interesting being educated that exactly. they're not Keyword, living in. Educated. Yeah. Because most countries ain't got education. You feel me? Mm-hmm. Like Africa. You got people coming from America going over to Africa, you know, just to teach kids. You feel me? Little kids mm-hmm. and shit. I mean, it's nuts. All the shit we got here, but still, it sucks. Yeah. Because the government fucks us every chance they get. Yeah, I was just talking to a guy. Bro, you better quit that damn yawning, bro. It's Saturday. I know. It's time for a nap. No, the hell. It ain't time for a couple shots of tequila. No. Yeah. Yeah. You haven't eaten breakfast yet. I haven't. (laughs) (laughs) I don't see how you do it. I got to eat, man. I gotta eat. I mean, yeah. I'm good right now. (laughs) (laughs) Man. Hell, I I got up about eight. I'm sitting there. I was watching uh, zombie house flipping. Zombie house flipping? Yeah, they take some of the worst worst shape houses. They look zombified. You feel me? Like a zombie would look Mm -hmm. fucked up. And they flip that shit, bro. And they be looking good. Like, if I had the money to do some shit like that, I would. Wow. But they were in Jacksonville, and they pulled back up to the job site, and they had a uh, cease work notice, stop all work oh, notice. Wow. yeah. Something about they had to get the shingles through, uh, signed off, uh, the exterior signed off. I'm like, what? That's crazy. I mean, but whatever you do in life, there's always obstacles. Oh, yeah. You know, but you just got to know and have the brains on how to overcome mm-hmm. them obstacles. Yeah. Gots to, man. Right? I mean, win at any means necessary. Right? Speaking of winning, I did get my fucking first W in Vondale last night Heck on yeah. Solo's Resurgent. Heck yeah. Yeah, it took 12 tries, but I fucking got it. Dang. Yeah, I started playing at like, let me see, I got off at 5. I started playing at like 5.30. Mm-hmm. And it was a little after 12 when I got off. Hmm. That's when I shut the, the system completely down because after 9, it was just me and uh, Jug playing TDM. Mm-hmm. Could have been 10 because he was an MW3 first. But it was, I wasn't going to call you, bro, because I know you was chilling. Yeah. Drinking that moonshine. Uh, we had a, I had a martini. I, I've been trying to study on how to learn uh, – how to make my what? You don't like martinis? Who the fuck still drink martinis? <laughs> I do, man. I love them. Really, bro? <laughs> I like the dirty martini because I, I like uh, pickle juice and olives. Olive juice. I like olives, but pickle juice, bro. P- pickle juice, bro. Yeah. Is that is that what they make? Just pickle juice and olive, and then what kind of alcohol? That's disgusting. Uh, use a uh, either vodka. I like. Um, <clears throat> I like gin in mine. So, I mean, it's, it's amazing. What drink. kind of gin, though? Is it like a Tangeray gin or a um, Seagram's? Probably Seagram's. Seagram's, yeah. I use that sometimes. <clears throat> but uh, I love it, man. I love them. It's so good. <laughs> well, I've always loved, like, uh, olive juice. Weird stuff? Yeah, weird stuff. You know, weird. Uh, I love it. So, a martini. Martini. Motherfuckers that got deep pockets drink that shit. Well, I mean, you do got you got deep pockets. No, you can make it yourself. It's like maybe like a dollar a drink. No. And yeah, if you make it yourself, you yeah. go to somewhere else, it's like nine dollars. Not me. <laughs> no. I'm I just, surprised you didn't get none of that uh that peach parmesan. Who um, was drinking Saturday night? Last Saturday night. Oh, Over no, at no, Cialis, no. that shit was Mm-mm. that shit smooth. Mm-mm. That's what y'all should have been drinking. 
No, I we just had like one drink. That was it. So I haven't. One uh, drink, bro. Yeah. No. Oh, no. Oh, no. Whenever I have more than one drink is when I come visit. <laughs> <laughs> that's it I'm not a drinker man I just uh, it's not my I mean thing. but when you socialize and you got a drink oh, you, you were socializing uh, last night yeah 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 socializing <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah I just I, I just you know I can only handle it like I'm getting old, bro. So you know what I mean. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> getting old. No, I don't know. I ain't getting old. I mean, yeah, I'm getting you know other numbers added to my number, you know, every year. But I ain't getting old. So I don't even think about it. I don't know what's wrong with breath. Oh, look, old. look, 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 look. Old man need a nap. Yep. Sure enough, it's Saturday. Yeah. You need a beer. Oh, no. Yeah. I need lunch. It was like 11.53. Bro, you just ate breakfast 30 minutes ago. I know. <laughs> I know. I need lunch. Next. Taco Bell closed today. No way. For the next three days. The one over in Pulaski still open. No, they closed too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I see what's going on here. I see what's going on. <laughs> Oh, God. You need some of that susus. I was talking about that yesterday. Man, I ain't had that in a long time. In a minute. Yeah. Mm. Pretty pretty good stuff. Mm-hmm. Good sandwiches. Pretty decent. But uh, <clears throat> I'm ready for them damn hog having links. Yeah. I'll yeah. bring them tomorrow. Yeah, 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 them links, man. I mean, if you bring them tomorrow, I mean, you know... Don't expect the women to get any. We gonna no, fuck I just some brought up. them to you, bro. Yes, we gonna fuck some up. We gonna fuck some up. <laughs> <laughs> they gonna be mad as hell. Oh well, fuck it. <laughs> fuck it. <laughs> they be all right. Yeah, they'll be fine. Shit. Hell, they be eating shit without us getting coffees, and y'all don't even drink coffee. Man. Yeah. But hell, bro. You got anything else? No, sir. No more vids? No, nah, I was just pulling that up to test the uh, audio. No, no more dirty martini jokes? No. no. Mm, that's just nasty. I love them, man. They're hey, awesome. but we did get to hear Jug on the, on the cast, though. There's another one. Uh, pickled okra martini. <laughs> <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> My soul threw up. All right. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, no. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. That was disgusting. <laughs> that was just awful. That's great. Oh, man. Why? <laughs> Why? Because <laughs> it's so good. It's, it's not so good. good. It don't sound good. It's delicious. Sound like your boo boo gonna turn colors. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. <laughs> I didn't. Uh, but they actually sell these at uh, Marky B. He he likes them too, and we always go to different places that have them whenever I go down to visit. Shout and out to Marky B. Even though Marky you, know, you don't invite B. me to shit, don't invite me. <laughs> the hell but yeah back to the story yeah, yeah. Uh, and um he introduced that that one to me and i was just like oh man it's pretty good just like i said niggas with deep pockets <laughs> drinks that shit he's a musician you know the nigga got deep pocket <laughs> he drinking that shit i'm drinking that cheap ass you feel me some e and j you know <laughs> some to kill you to kill you you know <laughs> Yeah, there's like all kinds of um, places down there that they brew their own tequila, gin, things like that. And Florence? Yeah. And you just now Artisan. telling me about this. Yeah. I thought you knew. We could have been tequila tasting every weekend. Oh, man. I'll bring the speaker with me while we chasing huh. tequila shit. 
They were like, bro, don't really know how to get a party started. Like, Y'all niggas giving out free tequila shots. Let's party. Oh, my God. <laughs> Got the perfect nigga in here. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's breweries everywhere down there, it seems. There's at least five, I think. I do want to go check out the old Jack Daniels, the fire department. Mm. I don't even care about the actual alcohol. But where's you know, that? Uh, somewhere east. Yeah, somewhere east of us. Mm. But it ain't that far. I think it's like maybe forty-five minutes to an hour drive, maybe maybe two hours. Mm. I don't know. I had to look it up. But uh, you know me being eight years in the fire department. You know, it's been three years since I've been in the fire department. But I did serve eight for the community. Yeah. Uh, checking out different fire departments is a thing, and. Jack Daniels Fire Department looks pretty amazing. So I want to go check her out, you know? Yeah. Get the inside on their FD. Because I'm sure, I don't know if they ever have a fire at that dispensary. But if they do, that's going to be a big motherfucker. But hell, man, I ain't got nothing. (laughs) You ain't got nothing, Mr. Nigga Need a Nap. Yeah, sure enough. But check this out. This is your man Combat coming from the couch. Combat Cup Podcast, y'all make sure y'all like, subscribe, share, comment, all that good stuff, man. Show your boys some love, you know. We'll show y'all some love. Good vibes only. But it's your man, Combat, my boy, Cup. We out. One love, baby. We had niggas in here playing trumpets and shit. <laughs> Why y'all still watching this, man? Hey, get out of here. We love y'all. Bye. Deuces. <laughs> oh, I gotta love it.